Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this. Uh, I wanted to talk about two or three different groups, uh, secularists and Pentecostals, and of course, extreme Pentecostals. And I wanted to address a problem that I see um, all too often in debates, arguments, and so forth. But first, secularists, I, I wanna address you. Now, if you don't fall into this camp, that's okay, but if the shoe fits, Take a hike. <laughs> All right, now, I have a lot of secular friends. I love them. They treat me like good. <laughs> they do. They treat me really well. They're very kind people. Not all of them, by any means. Just like not all professing Christians are kind people. Good grief. <laughs> anyway, listen. Uh, secularists. It is not fair to accuse Jesus or Christianity, biblical Christianity, by what we see on TV. It's just not fair. The stuff on TV, the, you know, knocking people over, blowing on the crowd, waving a coat and everybody falling over and massive gibberish speaking in tongues and fake healings and manipulating people to give money for fake healings. That is not Christianity. And it's not fair. I'm not saying all you secularists do this, but a lot of you secularists do do this. And I emphasize the do-do, okay? You misrepresent Jesus and Christianity and so do those Pentecostals. Don't get me wrong. That whole TV, they are a misrepresent misrepresentation of Christianity. Honestly, they are. But so are you doing that, misrepresenting Christianity, when you lump Jesus into that crowd, when you lump biblical Christianity into that crowd. And if all you have to do, see, this is what all secularists need to do. Just read the Bible, whether it's a book of myths or the word of God, at least read it to be informed about what Christianity is versus what it is not. Because it is not what we see on TV. And... Lest we be confused, it also, Christianity is not those who speak with hypocritical and condemnatory spirits toward other people. That's not Christianity either. This isn't Christianity. A guy getting behind the pulpit and telling everybody homosexuals, homosexuality is evil, and then he gets caught being a homosexual and doing meth. That's not Christianity. Okay? That's not. That's not what the Bible teaches. In fact, what the Bible teaches is this. It, whoever you are, if you have a, you need to remove the beam that's in your own eye before you remove the speck that's in someone else's eye. That's biblical. Jesus is saying in the same chapter, I think it's like Matthew 5, judge not that you be not judged. And he says, whatever standard you use to judge another, that same standard is going to be used to judge you. So if you get Christians coming at you and telling you, don't do this, don't do that, and then they're doing the same thing, that's not Christianity. Rather, what Christianity is, was what Paul taught in the book of Acts. When they all started to worship him and Barnabas, they said, Paul and Barnabas said, don't do that. We lust just like you do. In other words, we do the same crap you do. Now that is Christianity. That's why Jesus said, judge not. So when you see someone in some prominent evangelical place or position or pulpit or church, mega church, whatever, youth camp, youth revival, telling people don't do this, don't do this, and yet they're doing it themselves. That's why I, you rarely see me telling people what to do, morally speaking, because I'm scared. I'm scared because I know I got beams in my eyes, baby. I know I got them there. And I'm scared to remove the speck. I've gone down that road before, pal. I have. I've gone down it. Every one of us has gone down that road. That's why every one of us needs to be slow in that act of judging. <laughs> you know, in fact, it's kind of interesting. The Bible says there's one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. I ain't him. And you aren't either. And so I apologize on behalf of those misrepresenting Christianity. I really do. And I've been there. I was one of those guys. And I'm just saying, don't mis misrepresent uh, Jesus and Christianity by saying this is what they do by looking at TBN or by looking at these, uh, you know, hypocritical, judgmental, self-righteous pastors. Don't do that. Okay. If you, now I will say this though, if you come across a Christian who is genuine, 
You know, a Christian who's, who's humble is not exalting themselves over you and, and just, you know, just admit. And you see them fall on their face. Don't judge them. Don't judge them. If they're not trying to remove the moat in your eye, the speck in your eye, if they're not trying to judge you, don't judge Christianity by them. If they've been merciful to you, say, oh, that's what Jesus taught. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now that, if you see a Christian being merciful to you and being merciful to those around them and loving them, there you go. There's the light of Jesus. That is Christianity. That's biblical Christianity. If you see someone saying, you know, like Paul, what then are we better than they? I mean, if anyone could say he was better than someone, it would be Paul. Because once he became a Christian, he was just like radical. But he said, what then? Are we better than they are? No, in no wise. For we before proved both Jew and Gentile that they're all under sin. So that's what we're talking about here. Now, on the charismatic side, you, if you fall into that extreme camp, if of Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and TBN and Paul and Jan Crouch and any of those other people who are smacking people in the head and telling them to give money to get healed, you misrepresent Christianity. That is a grotesque, grotesque misrepresentation of Christianity. Nowhere in the Bible do you find being slain in the spirit. Nowhere in the Bible do you find mass hysteria and uh, stuff after the manner of the Brownsville revival and the Toronto blessing and the Azusa Street revival. Nowhere, nowhere, you, you, you won't find it. It's not in the Bible. That's not Christianity. And this gibberish, this speaking in tongues, that's not Christianity. And so I'm saying we need to get out of it. My challenge, and this is still to you Pentecostals, whatever flavor of Pentecostal you are, my challenge, and I threw it out there like four or five years ago, my challenge is this. I will give anyone $5,000, mark my words, $5,000 if you can prove to me. I'm not saying God doesn't heal. I'm not saying he can't heal. I'm not even saying he couldn't give someone a, a, a language at that point to talk to someone uh, who speaks a foreign language. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this. I have never seen a miracle after the manner of miracles that Christ did, which were always visible, physical and instantaneous. Even the Pharisees said, whoa, this guy did a notable miracle. Not this crap you see on TV. I'm not being mean. Come on, come on. I'm just frustrated here. I'm frustrated with this stuff because it's jacking the name of Jesus around and that ain't right. Even if it's just a, a, a book of literature, it's still, still messing with the name of Jesus. Oh, and by the way, seculars, it's wrong for Christians to say, oh, well, look at Stalin. He was an atheist. That's what atheism leads to. You know, logically, they may try and find a path, but that's not right. That is disingenuous. That is unfair to misrepresent you like that. If you're an atheist, you're an atheist. And most of the atheists I know genuinely want to see lives saved <laughs> for the most part. Okay. I have some problems, serious problems with abortion. Okay, but gen generally speaking, uh, you know, they, they don't want to see people hurt. Okay, and, and to say that, well, you know, all atheists, you know, lead to this kind of starvation of millions of peasants. No, that's misrepresentation. And if Christians have done that, that's wrong. <laughs> it's dead wrong. And Christians should not do that. Now, we can challenge atheism, the philosophy, if we want to look at the philosoph philosophy, philosophy, the philosophy of atheism, uh, that's Okay. And, and we can all try our best to find uh, logical conclusions of any particular worldview or, or paradigm, okay? That was just kind of a little interjection there. But let's go back to this. I will give anyone 5,000 if they show me a visible, in person, not on TV, because man, CGI, you could do whatever you want. You know, you could put a head on one person and take his head and put it on another. No, that didn't count. I need it in person. Now, listen. I will pay my own way to travel to see it. But if I do not see it, you have to reimburse me for my travel expenses. However, if I see it, you don't have to pay a dime for my travel expenses. And I will pay you $5,000. I will get a loan. I will refinance my house with cash out to pay you the $5,000. Because it'll be worth it. If I see a physical 
instantaneous, verifiable miracle like the ones Jesus did, a notable miracle, I will pay you $5,000. That offer has stood for now four or five years. No one has made an offer to me to show me a miracle. No one. And here I am. I am a Christian. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead. Can I prove it? No. Okay. I know you said, what? You believe something you can't prove? Yeah, I do. Deal with it. <laughs> but honestly, you Pentecostals, that challenge, that challenge is there. I'm not challenging your intellect. I'm not. Uh, it, it will. No, no, I won't go there. <laughs> I'm not challenging your intellect. But man, if you're the brand, if you're the extreme brand that's just buying into that stuff, that hocus pocus magic, well, it's not even magic. I mean, David Copperfield does better than Benny Hinn. Holy cow. You know, I mean, who, who is so gullible? Who is that that just goes in there and says, oh, this guy waved his coat at me and I'm going to fall back? I mean, I, uh, there but for the grace of God. Anyway, stands. I love you all. I love you Pentecostals. I love you secularists. And then even you extreme Pentecostals. Man, run as fast as you can from that stuff. And let's stop the misrepresentations of each other's philosophies. Let's stop that the best we can. You know, let's just deal Deal with dialogue, listening, bouncing ideas off one another, sharpening. That's okay. That is okay to do. Um, but man, let's stop misrepresenting Jesus. I mean, Jesus was humble and meek and kind. And he reached out to sinners. Holy cow. <laughs> you know, look at the example of the adulterous woman. Here's a woman caught in the act of adultery and these religious elite were about to stone her. Jesus says, all right, all right. Whoever's without sin, let him cast the first stone. They all start walking away from the oldest to the youngest, being convicted in their conscience. And Jesus turns to the lady and says, Woman, where are your accusers? She says, They've gone away. He says, Neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. If Jesus can treat someone with that kind of mercy and compassion and love, who are we to act judgmental and haughty? You know? We all have to catch ourselves. We all have to catch ourselves. And really examine ourselves, especially us Christians, you know, who are always talking about, you know, judge not and being merciful. We all do, man. Oh, gosh, it's, it's a daily battle for me. Why? Because our nature uh, wants to rise up. You know, we want to dismember and cremate, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> well, did I say that? <laughs> but no, we, we do. We, we, we have a tendency to be haughty. Bible says, for him that thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. Man, why is up? It's the scariest thing in the world. And I'll just leave you with this. It is one of the scariest things in the world to, to try. And I, every day, every day I scare myself because I think about removing the moat in someone's eye. It happened to me just today. It happened to me just today. There's this dude who is just the most radical gossip I've ever seen, I think, in my life. No, he's not one of my Facebook friends. And I, 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 I was just filled with rage today. And then I was like, oh gosh, how many, how many times have I done that? How many times have I gossiped, slandered, you know? So anyway, uh, you know, let's just be humble. Like Tim McGraw's song, humble and kind. Just be humble and kind and reach out to others who are struggling, who are falling on their face. You know, what do you do when someone speaks evil against you? Oh, the Bible says Jesus, when they reviled against him, he did not revile in return, but instead committed himself to him who judges righteously. You know, only God judges righteously. You know, that righteous judgment, which is, which is about the heart. And, the, and we can't see each other's hearts. Okay, so anyway, I've gone on long enough. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this, kind of a long video appreciate you guys. Appreciate the dialogue, iron sharpening iron. Go with God.